Hello everybody, it's SD Matt Haven here today, and we're going to be taking a look at the Cobra, the Tier 9 British Medium that was recently released into the game with Season 15 Ultimate Pass. If you're catching this later down the road, hopefully the information is still valid, um, but, you know, based upon what the Caliban happened, uh, hopefully they don't remove any equipment from this one. Hopefully they add stuff rather than take away. Now... The Cobra during the time I'm playing the tank, I I can say that it's it's not bad. I'm gonna correct myself. I put up um a video uh like two, three days ago on the seventh or the eighth. I can't remember off the top of my head. But it it's it's not a joke. Our high explosives work a lot differently than the way PC does, and it does cause a couple of issues with the way that the hash rounds are going to be played inside this tank. So let's go ahead, let's dive into some statistics here and take a look at the tank entirely. So starting off, we're looking at 268 standard penetration. They are heat rounds. Keep that in mind whenever you, if you do want to play this tank or if you're looking to purchase this tank. Uh, your premium rounds are hash with 210 penetration and then your high explosives are also hash rounds with 120 pen. Your alphas, you're looking at 360 base damage. On your heat rounds, and then on your premium hash, you're looking at 490, and then in your regular hash rounds, you're looking at 515, uh, 1600 hit points, 40 top speed, and 25 reverse. So this is what's really nice about this tank, is that you do have this really good reverse speed to be able to get out of the way of the enemies, if that's what you want to do, just get out of there quickly. Um, along with that, 370 view range, um, I have found that tanks that are in the range of 380 and lower. I just highly recommend situational awareness and optics because you want to have that competitive view range to be able to spot at your targets depending on the tier that you're in. If you're looking at 370 in tier 6, a lot of tier 6s are in that range of view range. Uh, there are some that have better view range inside tier 6 and 7, but primarily view range is one of the biggest things in the game that I just recommend grabbing and going crazy on as much as you can get premium consumable, everything else. Currently, my view range of my Cobra, I am looking at 473, and that is with a max out crew, premium consumable, and with optics. So 473, you are past the view range cap, which is 445. Everything past that is considered uh, anti-concealment. Your uh, concealment inside this tank, uh, detectability range, concealment they keep on changing so many things you got your moving concealment and your still concealment which i really do like about this if you i did run a crew on this that was a concealment build at first and i was in the range of 300 for my um still concealment which does make a big difference whenever you're you know sitting down waiting or you're prompt behind a bush to get ready to take your shot 380 base um the percentage on this is probably in the range of maybe 0.12 for 12% overall. Uh, so it's not bad. Your concealment, it's not the greatest, but it's not the worst. It does allow you a lot of mobility. And if you do want to do a concealment build on this, um, camouflage expertise and silent and driving are going to be your best bet. All right, let's go ahead and jump into the gun. You have a 120 millimeter, uh, 4.4 rounds per minute, which this is actually a lie. If you're running rapid loading on this tank with improved ventilation, you can get your reload down to... 40 seconds or even 38 seconds which allows you to get eight rounds off per minute and eight rounds off per minute that's an effective dpm in the range of 3860 I, I could be wrong on that i'm actually just gonna go ahead and do this hi calculator let's do 490 times eight 3920 i was close all right top of my head don't judge me but 3,920 DPM, and that's within the course of a minute. So from the time that you start firing to 40 seconds later and you load um, 3,920, that's not bad. That's a lot of damage potential. You know, I probably should have d did the 490 and then just minus the amount of rounds at 10. Yeah, you know, d let's, let's not go there. We're just going to continue on. Damage per minute, this is a lie. <laughs> Blast radius, 2.42, so if you do feel like you can splash the tracks of somebody around a corner, just be, I guess, a little obnoxious if you want to. Uh, module damage, I love how they're including this. 165 hit points of module damage, that's really nice. It is a 120 module damage. It is nice to see. 
Um, penetration, I really like this. Penetration of 500 meters. There's a lot more information on this. Max ammo speed, 793. Um, over on PC, it's actually 1,165. But we'll get into what they traded off on that here in a second. Max ammo rage, 720. They've included a lot, including heat, hesh, and HE. That is really nice. Reload time, base, 50 seconds. Aim time, 3.8. So, I actually... Did not have much of a problem with my aim time. Your first shell, sure, you're going to send it in. It's going to feel a little bit uncomfortable because it's going to take a second to fully aim in. But once you're fully aimed in, and the time from you fire to the time that you aim in again, that 1.5 second interclip reload is extremely nice to have because you don't run into the problem of needing to aim a little bit longer unless the targets are past 400 meters. Ammo capacity of 32. Um, I have not yet ran out of ammo on this tank, but I have come very close in the few matches that I put inside of it, which hasn't really been many. Um, accuracy during rotation, 1.34. This is going to take a lot more time to get used to because they've never included this statistic. So this will take a minute to uh, really dissect and find out what we want to do with this and if it's even worth mentioning. Accuracy of 0.38 though, it's not the worst accuracy. 0 0.4, 0 0.42, 0 0.44, there are tanks that have that accuracy. This is actually in a pretty comfortable range. If you can get this down to 0 0.33 or even 0 0.34, that's a really comfortable margin for dispersion values. Max gun depression of 10 degrees and max elevation of 13 degrees. So, a couple of problems. This tank can work a ridgeline. However, if we're going to be talking about the turret armor, let's actually grab, let's say, the 703, or, you know, actually, IS-3A. IS-3A. We're going to grab the IS-3A. And this is the IS-3A standard pin, so 221 versus the Cobra. So, off the bat, you guys can see big chunks of green on the left and right. So, if you are a standard round player and you don't want to use premium rounds... Even when this thing is maxing out its gun depression, the left and right of its turret are still considered weak spots because they're only 200 effective armor across the board. Even the top part appears only 152 unless he is elevating his turret. And then they jump into the range of 187. But nonetheless, this is... It's not a bad tank. The armor on it, it's okay. If you're top tier and you're not going against your own tier, you're not going up against tier 9s and you're going against 8s that don't have enough standard pin to be able to hand this but the second that the heat rounds get loaded it's a different story even premium apcr and ap rounds well they have a lot of fun going through this turret and i it it's got good armor if you're wanting to peek around corners and just work some corners you want to make sure that you're keeping your gun straight if you decide to peek a corner though that way you do maintain maximum armor value but side armor wise 30 millimeters it's going to get torn apart left and right the side of the turret's 85 back of the turret's 80 so at least your turret's going to be able to auto ricochet but don't rely on this auto ricochet if you if you want to side scrape it's got to be against 90 millimeters anything bigger and it's just going to tear through your side armor this is kind of more of a mobile tank so going ahead jumping back in but the gun depression is nice the armor on it it's not the greatest it's not the worst uh your turret the thickest part of it is only 215, and that's actually right underneath the uh, gun itself, and then 135 on that top. So if you're aiming down, and you're aiming down, and someone can get shots in the top armor, they will have a lot of easy times getting those pins. So make sure that if you're approaching someone, which a lot of people like to do this, I like to lock my turret and then look around the map from a higher vantage point. But whenever I do that, I lock my turret in a straight position, that way, if I do pull a corner like that, I'm not already pre-aimed to the ground. Your turret's flat on to maintain the most effective armor value. So, turret. We got 130 millimeters in the front, which is correct. That is actually the top, 135. So, it's 135. Where's that 130 that they're talking about? Um, turret armor, 130. Let's come back. Let's go underneath here. Let's take a look inside here. 130. Oh, is that what they're talking about? This bar? Is it's is that what they're talking about? Okay, so that's mislabeled. Uh, 130s right there. The entire turret is super thick. I don't see 130 anywhere on this turret except for right here. Even on Xbox, Xbox is also saying the same thing. So I'm a little bit lost on why they have 130 right there, but that's that's okay. I guess that's okay. 
All right. I'm fine with that. Coming back. Uh, traverse speed, 44 degrees. This is on your tracks. It's not... Actually, no, that's turret. 44. That's that's pretty quick. That's really quick. You don't need to take uh, rapid aim on this. Uh, position. Primary. Um, can you uh, give a little bit more information on what this is? I mean, maybe there's fixed as well, so we could be talking about a fixed turret. So the trade-off for the shell velocity. So if we come down 793 on the Hesh rounds, the heat rounds and the high explosives are the same in PC, but they made the Hesh 793 as well. And the exchange for that was a 350 horsepower bump. So giving us a effective power to weight of 29.15. Coming back over here, stats and statistics, power to weight is 18.41 on PC. So we did get a massive power to weight ratio bump in exchange for slower shells. I am actually okay with that because this thing with 1,165 shell velocity would be extremely scary. 20% um, fire chance. So far in the time I played it, I haven't had much of an issue with fires. Uh, one thing about console though that I will give them prompts to is the fact that we do actually have module viewers inside the game. So... We do have a big fat engine right in the back of this side scraping inside of it is just not recommended because of all the overmatch. If you want to risk a fire side scrape inside this tank and you will be risking it quite a bit. So I just highly advise against side scraping along with that, your ammunition on the inside. Um, it's not bad. Just know that if you're side scraping and you're pulling out on your left side, so you're pulling out like that, uh, you are exposing the Amorax in the lower part of the tank. But now if you're versing the tank and someone is doing this, you now know to aim a little bit lower on the lower part of the tracks. If you aim for the center tracks and you aim slightly above them, you'll be aiming towards the ammo rack. So it's something to learn because that means if you can break his ammo rack twice, you're going to be making him reload for 1 minute and 20 seconds, knocking him out of the fight for a very long time. It's something simple, but it's something that can happen. And if you know where to aim, you can make it happen often. Along with that, track traverse speed, 48 degrees, and your terrain resistance essentially has almost no value due to the power-to-weight ratio on this tank. Um, the 1, the 1.1, 1 .1, and then the 1.9. If you guys do not want to take off-road driving on this tank, you do not need to. And 570 meters of effective radio range for your signal. That's actually, it's on the lower end. You know, there's some tier 8s and that have better radio range than this, that's 730 to 800 and then, I mean, if you want to, you guys can take the radio perk, which I can't even remember what it's called because it just, for me, it, it's not even there. <laughs> that's all it is. Well, that's all the statistics for the tank. Um, my opinion on the thing, it's, it's not bad, but it's not good at the same time. The reload time definitely does kill this thing. And I do find myself getting stuck quite often due to that reload. So, equipment-wise, I'm running Optics Traction System, and this is probably the first time anyone has ever seen me running a traction system on a tank. Uh, the reason why I'm running a traction system is because it, the power-to-weight bump makes it to where we don't need advanced power terrain. We're maxing out our top speed at 44, even maintaining 40 going uphill on a lot of maps. So, primarily, the advanced power terrain, uh, terrain you do not need it. This is something that is meant for tanks in the range of like uh, 15 power to weight or 14 power to weight to help them get that bump up and give them a bit more response time and increase their top speed a tad bit. For instance, my number one tank that I love to put this on is the Kriovets 1, the uh, Scourge, and it makes a difference on that tank. But on this tank, traction system for me is the way to go. Everyone's going to have their own build. Originally, I was running advanced concealment which could technically be considered a decent trade-off because it's going to be giving you the extra concealment inside the tank, but it will require you to redo your crew compared to what I'm currently running. But I did run two builds in this tank, and more than likely I might pay the silver to be able to show those both off that way you guys can get an idea in the statistics that you can see and make up your minds if you want to do that build. Uh, gun stabilizer and advanced optics. I have not yet run improved ventilation on this tank, but from what I know, the 5% advantage could benefit the reload, but the gun stabilizer and the top speed is really hard to beat. And due to the view range being 370, sacrificing optics just does not sound viable inside the Cobra. 
ammunition loadout, everyone can take her, whatever they want to take. But due to the fact that we do not have intuition in game, and also the fact that they're taking advanced reload away from a lot of tanks, taking away the variety and ability to um, have proper burst potential. Cough, cough. Caliban. They, re they, by the way, they denied my refund. That sucked. So I'm not going to do anything about it. I just think it's dumb that they debuffed a premium. But I'm running, I'm running 24 Hesh rounds and 8 Heat rounds. Primarily the Heat on this thing. I... Do not like relying on it. If we did have intuition, I would actually take some regular HE rounds and I would take, like, I'd take two clips of regular HE or the regular Hesh rounds, which I would take. Are they Hesh? No, they're HE. I would take two regular HE rounds. <laughs> two full clips of regular HE rounds if we had intuition in game. Okay. Um, what else to go over? Nothing. We got replays. That's what we need to do. So let's go ahead and dive into it. I am sorry that you guys are seeing the uh, delay on this. Um, I actually started the recording on this one a little bit too late further inside the match. Um, starting off, I did clip out an AMX 5120 with a little bit of assistance from Blade. And here we go. We're going to pull on the bar. We do have four shells loaded. Two and ammo rack 1154 so with the fast interclip reload inside this if you know where ammo racks are located you will be able to consistently pop tops because you're going to pre-damage it and then your second shell is going to come in at 1.5 seconds and if that one doesn't pop the top or damage the ammo rack you still have two more shells to rely on to be able to pop an ammo rack um during the time i played this tank i actually hit three ammo racks in the entire time i played this tank and I only invested a total of, and this is over the course of, I can't remember how many games. Ah, uh, my brain, it's going dead. Speaking of which, for everyone that's currently playing the game, um, the update that happened on the 12th, yes, the 12th, the update that was applied yesterday, last night, yeah, um, it, I, I can't play the game currently because they messed up the way turrets are uh, locating now and it's just not worth playing for me right now until they fix that issue. So I've invested a total of 17 battles inside the Cobra with 2,632 W Knight. I was not maintaining a very high output on the tank, but I was performing decent. It's not really much of a maintaining, but I, I was trying my best. It doesn't mean that I'm always going to succeed. Now, already up to 5,236 damage dealt. I actually missed out on what I just fired at because I was looking away for a split second. Um, I probably should get a fourth monitor so I don't need to look... I'm just kidding, that's horrible. But, no, the Cobra, it's... In my opinion, it's going to be a really specific taste. It is not my taste for this tank. I do not find myself playing this thing often because it's relying on Hesh and Heat. Um, I might pull this out every once in a while upon a request on stream or anything like that, but primarily as like a standard go-to tank, I will not find myself making this a go-to tank. However, I do see the benefits of using this in tier 9 comp, if you guys play comp. Tier 9 comp, this tank probably could be a decent burst potential choice over the MX-5120 or even any of the other autoloaders inside that category. Um, for instance, uh... I would probably pull out the Lorraine 40 ton, 40 ton for some tier 9 action, in all honesty, over the Cobra, just because that thing, for me, it it's lacking a little bit, but it's a really fun tank to play. Not to mention, it's premium rounds of APCR with 263 penetration, and that'd be more of a go-to for me. Uh, so we put one shell inside the AMX 50B, 30B, not 50B, and we set them on fire with our second one that penetrated. Up to 6,637. So the one thing I do like about the Cobra is just that full clip potential. You're able to put multiple shells in, and if you're penetrating, they hurt. High rolls for 500, low rolls for 190, or even 23. I actually had a couple hit me today, and it was 23 damage. Then again, it wasn't today. It was yesterday. Yes, yesterday. I was playing inside the Object 260, and they were doing 23 damage. So... Keep in mind, if you're shooting heavily angled armor that's thick, yes, almost no damage. 
Um, even against heavily angled armor itself. If it's lightly armored, you'll do decent damage, but primarily your goal is to try and find weak spots and hammer them out as much as you can. Missing a shot on the Chieftain. I cannot remember how this one went. I do remember I put two shots into the Chieftain, but I can't remember where one hit. There we go, 144 and 136. And that is due to the spaced armor on the back of the Chieftain that's only 6 millimeters thick. Um, I guess it's just Chieftains that are, have been giving me a problem inside the Cobra. With all their additional spaced armor, it has been causing me a little bit of an issue. But 7,357 damage dealt, 4 kills, uh, 2,000 experience match for... I think, I do believe that is base XP. I will find out in a moment. I'm having a brain fart if it's a 1.5 multiplier or not. Metals. Mastery badge with 7,000 damage dealt plus. An ammo rack, bruiser, uh, arsonist. And yes, 2,009 base experience earned inside the tank. Right here I did pull up the performance report to scroll down to show out the MX-5120. Um, I did put my three in. Blade also put one in and took him down as well. Um, all hits and bars, full hit points. Um, I'm guessing the one I missed would have been the Death Star. Yes, I put three rounds into that. Uh, along with that, the GW Tiger, you know, Sky Cancer. Got to absolutely delete that. And up next, let's go ahead and dive right into the second replay. So, this is on Westfield. This match, I chose this match because this is one of the ones where I did get caught out. I was not able to really get my full clip potential. But, Westfield is a map that is actually fantastic to show off the power to weight and the traction system on this tank. And by the way, there was a glitch at this time where your turrets would just instantly snap the second that you load in. And, but it wasn't breaking, it's not game breaking glitch, it was just really annoying. Uh, kind of a, it had a giggle factor to it, more than anything. It was a massive giggle factor, I loved it, it was funny. But, as you guys can see, I'm loading the heat rounds and Currently, I was looking away. I can't remember what I was doing, but I was, was looking away. The second I look back, you'll see my immediate reaction to swap in the right ammunition once I notice. Because I did not notice. What am I going to do? I know I did it. There it is. <laughs> right before I'm loaded, I'm like, oh, no, loading heat. No one wants that 360. We want the 490. But going 27, 28 up this hill is it's a massive advantage. You're able to really get the move on. Um, sadly though, the concealment on this tank, it's not that good. And even with a concealment crew, it's still not highly effective. It's decently effective, but it's not highly effective. It does give you a lot more of a safety net um, overall. And you know what? That's what I forgot to show you guys. I forgot to show you guys my commander on this. I'm a Muppet. We will take a look at that after the match. But a 40.5 second reload. Honestly, it's not too bad. You can sacrifice improved ventilation on this tank and feel perfectly fine with it. An extra two seconds is not going to kill you. I, I mean, it might actually kill you, but it won't kill you outright right away. Right here, we do get spotted. I'm going to back off. We're going to put a 152. We're going to put a 187. We're going to aim for the back. 486 plus a pin. And then our ally inside the uh, bar throws in a 1,200 damage hit which we did get full experience for because we did track the um, Leopard. So already up to 1,300 damage dealt and 1,584 assisted. I mean, this was a good game, but it's a sign where you, you can't really get the clips out. It struggled. I felt like it struggled. The shell velocity took away from it. However, the trade-off for the power to weight I do like that. It, it kind of introduces something different. Um, primarily, each season that goes by, I would like to see a bit more content added in the game. They could have done something really cool with this tank, like made it a Halloween tank. But keep in mind, I don't want to see this as a Halloween tank. This is not a monster mesh tank. The reason why the first autoloader introduced to that is the... That was a... I, was that? That was not a penetrate. Was that a penetrate? I don't know. Um, the first one introduced is going to be the Arachnid, which is a two-shot autoloader, and um, if they added the cover, which has a four, it, it would kind of really change the um, atmosphere for that. I know that there's the Lycan over there that's got a really fast fire rate, really fast reload, but 
but adding in a big damage gun inside there, it would it would just take away because it'd be able it would take down um, a couple of tanks a little bit too quick. Right here, it's all about how far we can move in. I'm gonna take the time to aim, take a guess shot, and we missed a guess shot. Um, take the time to aim, throw it down way, and we blew up the building. Take 566 penetration on the side of the tortoise. And right there, there was three shots missed, one shot pinned. And this is where it starts to get a little bit tragic, where the dispersion value is showing itself and the aim time is starting to show itself a tad bit. But if you look at the aim time, it doesn't feel too bad, even whenever I'm throttling it and going forward and backwards, 25 backwards, coming to a stop. That 3.8 aim time does not feel like it's hindering the tank in the slightest. I, I don't feel like it is. Because with the four shot clip, I don't feel much of a problem. And here comes blade shot. How? Is the hatch in that 210? My 156? <laughs> blade surprised the crap out of I saw that from Blade and I sat there and I'm like, wow, that's a good hit. Right here, taking a blind shot. Kind of hoping that it would hit the back of the Rosarante. But no. It went bye bye. It's not going to happen. Now, cons in the tank, I, I think I already went over them. You have no armor on this. Your frontal armor is where all your armor is located. Your top plate, it's decent. Your lower plate, it's decent. If you want to peek a corner, you can bait some shots into your top and lower plate if you overexpose correctly. Um, along with that, if artillery hits you, sadly, in the 17 matches that I played inside this tank, three of those matches, I was one shot. And it's a little disappointing that artillery is still so powerful on console because I really don't want it to be, but there's nothing that I can do about it. You know, I'm just a single person. I can put a, a vote in towards debuffing artillery in a proper way to rebalance it. 131, looking for the low plate, 94, 66, bounce. There you go. This this is actually, it was a good start, but then after the good start, it went downhill inside this tank. And even against standard rounds, I believe that was a standard round that came from the M103. I have no audio for this currently, so I don't know if it was or not. I'm not going to rewind it to see what the shell was that hit me. But even against standard rounds, he probably would have tore through the turret like it was paper, because it's only 240 effective on the turret. It's not that good. It, it primarily dominates against tier 8s more than it does tier 9s and tier 10s. Now, uh, here's where the fun begins. We're going to put two. We're going to back up and we're going to finish off the T-57 Heavy. So there was a double kill, but it required us to push up. With the traction system and the power to weight in this thing, it does move quick inside city scenarios. If you want to relocate quickly, this thing can relocate very quickly. And it has surprised me with how fast it can relocate. 29 power to weight, 40 top speed. Um, it does feel like the power to weight might be a little bit too much for the tank. Because 29, it does make a difference going uphill. It does make a difference slamming on reverse. It makes it really responsive in what you wanted to do. A little bit too responsive, in my opinion. We probably could have done with a little bit less on the power to weight and then had a bit more advantage on the shell velocity. And I think that would have turned out a lot better. But this match was 6,000 combined, 6,100 combined, 4,000 damage dealt, 2,000 damage assisted, and four kills. However, the shots that were missed, there is a possibility that you can experience that back to back to back to back for every single clip that you decide to fire off, you have a chance of that happening. Not mentioning that you hit the armor wrong, and then the only thing that you manage to do is miss every single shot. Or, for instance, you make contact with the tank, but you're doing under 100 damage per hit, so advanced reload would have fixed that. You could have been able to swap into your heat round and guaranteed 360 on the thicker armor targets, and a couple of other things. It kind of sucks that they did remove that. And yeah, 
It does suck a little bit. Let's go ahead and dive into the crew. And uh, starting off, Born Leader. Um, for those of you guys who do not know this, Born Leader was buffed. Um, if you read it now compared to all the other reviews that I have out, increased all right. Uh, 10% increase to skill, effectiveness, and crew performance. So here we go. Rapid loading is a skill. Steady aim, I do not know if it's a skill. It might be a perk. If it's a skill, it's a 10% bonus of 1% increase. Situational awareness is considered a skill, which means that it has a 0.6% increase. If we were to move born leader and only have six cents on, our view range would actually kind of plummet down a little bit more than normal. Um, six cents. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm actually going to try and push to say this should not even be a perk. This should be an in-game mechanic. They should remove this. I would love to see this as an in-game mechanic. That way we have a ninth slot open for perks. So I can sit there a bit more confused because my ninth perk, I still have no idea what to put on. That means that I'm going to have two perks that I have no idea what to put on, which gives me comfort to work with builds. Um, Off-road driving, along with that track mechanic, snapshot, and safe stowage. Now, if you guys do want to use a concealment build on this, let's go ahead and drop the advanced um, the, the traction system. Let's put advanced concealment on this and let's go ahead and swap the commander over to the crew that I was using on this, which did it, it did feel pretty comfortable to run this crew as I'm a Muppet. It's a bad chat 25 ton. It is just my concealment crew. I kind of don't feel the point and I, I could have probably transferred or oh, whatever. It, it, it is what it is. I just equipped it to the tank. Born leader, rapid loading, six cents, camouflage expertise, muffled shot, situational awareness, silent driving, track mechanic, steady aim. And with this build equipped, still concealment dropped all the way down to 317. And that's also including camo on the tank. So now that I've gone over the two builds that I used on this tank and um, spent 60 gold, I'm okay with that, whatever. But Cobra, it's not bad. For Ultimate Season Pass, it it's not a bad tank. It's actually a really nice tank. Holy crap, that light's bright, freaking killing my eyeballs. It's right behind the camera. It is so bright. I, I have to turn it down. Oh, that killed me. I probably should have turned it out at the start of the video, but it, it is what it is. Um, you guys, it's not a bad pickup. Ultimate Season Pass, it, it's a good deal. The Season Pass itself, is it, it feels like a refresh or recycled content, which does kind of suck. If you are playing during Season 15, the Awakened Season, this would be worth the 6,000 gold to pick up. Or wait for it to come out later down the road and spend 17,500 on the tank, which is the actual gold value of the tank. I'd rather pay six, not going to lie, over 17,500, because that's expensive. If you're able to pick it up now, I would recommend it. If not, because you don't want to get the tank, because it does sound like it would fit your play style, then completely avoid it. That's fine, too. Other than that, you guys, thank you for being here. Um, leave a like, comment, subscribe, seriously comment on what you guys think about this tank. I would like to know your opinion. And along with that, uh, today is awesome. I contacted Scareface, asked if he would like to make a thumbnail. He said, yeah. So, let's do a shout out for him. The guy's amazing. You know, whenever he first got all of his equipment, I wanted to wait before I would do a shout out for Scareface. And Scareface, if you're watching this, yes, I watched you upload content. I wanted to see you get more consistent on it, which you are maintaining a regular upload period. So, yeah, let's do some shout-outs. I wasn't going to shout-out your channel literally the first video. I was going to wait a little while because I wanted to see if you were going to get into it and go at it. He's a fantastic player, you guys. And if it's not popping up in the middle of the screen right now, okay, because I probably monologued too long and it's not there. Yeah, monologue too long. Other than that, you guys, thank you. He made the thumbnail, by the way. I'm going to say thanks for making the thumbnail. Like, just here, now. Thank you. You see the monologue. It's totally not there. However, it should be popping up right about... I got to really angle that thumb right about now. Okay? Guys, have fun. If you want the Caliban, go get it. If anything, let me know in the comments how much damage you guys have done inside this tank. It should be there now. 